nobody had noticed Wilbur sneaking away from the crowd, alone. Wilbur entered the detonation chamber, and the single button stood in the middle of the room had the power to destroy it all. The thing that I built this nation for doesn't exist anymore. The, th the thing I work towards doesn't exist anymore. It's over. What are you doing? <laughs> there, there was a saying, Phil, by a traitor, uh, once part of the Manberg. It was never meant to be. Oh my god. Wilbur had destroyed everything. The single press of a button had decimated all of Le Manberg. Technoblade, who had fled the scene as soon as his withers were killed, was nowhere to be seen. The world fell silent as the people marveled their lost land in disbelief. But this was no time to mourn. Tubbo, being the new president of Le Manberg, took it upon himself to take inventory and begin rebuilding their nation. Gathering the remaining allies of Le Manberg, Tubbo elected his cabinet and made his first executive order. Starting the next day, the people would begin to rebuild Le Manberg on stilts above the crater. By leaving the destruction visible and keeping Le Manberg as peaceful as possible, the people hoped to never let their nation fall again. The day of the war came and went, and the next day, reconstruction began. Everyone logged on to the server to help. Tommy, needing to be informed of the plans, met with Tubbo in the Le Manberg embassy. There, Tubbo explained how Le Manberg would be rebuilt and his plans of keeping peace. However, Tommy had something he wanted to say as well. The night before, Tommy had found out that Quackity and Tubbo thought he was the traitor before it was revealed to be Techno and Wilbur. Then, Tommy recalled that in a previous skirmish with Dream, Tommy and Tubbo managed to team up once again to reclaim one of his discs, Mellowhigh. And now, to show the true extent of his trust, Tommy gave Tubbo the disc. Over the next few days, a new Lamanberg arose from the shadows of their once great land. And with a podium to rule from and a cabinet he could trust, Tubbo began his first term as president of New Le Manberg. Following the explosion of Le Manberg, Wilbur ordered Filza, who had just logged onto the server for the first time, to kill him. But although he could technically just respawn, Wilbur would not be coming back. At least not as Wilbur. In the Dream SMP story, there exists a canon life system. This system is put in place to give the story more weight and to ensure that the deaths which are important to the story feel important. Upon joining the server, every player is given three canon lives. This essentially means that if a character has a death that is used to progress the story, it will count as one canon death. Once a character uses up all of their canon lives, that character is considered dead in the story. For good. Both Tommy and Tubbo had only one life remaining because of Eret's betrayal, Tommy's duel with Dream, and the Manberg Festival. And Wilbur, having ordered Phil to kill him, had lost his final life in the story. But in his place arose a new character. The day after the war, Wilbur rejoined the server. But this time, he was different. He was a ghost. Gosper is not a normal character on the Dream SMP. Being a mere shadow of Wilbur, Gosper has a limited thought process and questionable memory. He doesn't remember sad moments and doesn't understand that people can be bad. Because of this, he sees the best in everything, a harsh contrast to his old self. Gosper lives in a sewer under a crane in New Lamanberg and holds a library with many important books from across the server's history. With his time on the server, all Gosper hopes to do is make new friends and build up the city to be the best it's ever been. But Gosper wasn't the only new character to join the SMP. Rambu, a viral sensation. Blowing up on TikTok because of his unique voice and comedic character, Rambu managed to amass 150,000 subscribers on YouTube in the first month and a half of his channel. 
Replicating this success across Twitch, Twitter, and, of course, TikTok, Rambu took the Minecraft community by storm. During one of his Twitch streams on the server Hypixel, Rambu began joking about running for president of Lamanberg without even playing on the SMP. But then, out of the blue, Rambu got a message from Dream inviting him to join the server. Being new, Rambu vowed to lay low until he clocked more hours on the server. But to his surprise, this plan would take a turn for the worst the very next day. Tommy and Rambu met the day Rambu joined the SMP, but only exchanged a few words. After Tommy rage quit realizing he was still the youngest on the SMP, the two wouldn't speak again until the next day. On November 28th, Tommy logged on with a plan. During the Manberg Pogtopia War, George, pretending not to know what was happening, built a house throughout the entire war. This house resided in the Greater Dream SMP and was made to resemble a hobbit home from Lord of the Rings. Today, Tommy planned to recruit Rambu to help him rob George's house because it looked depressing. I went into there. Thinking... It's, it's sad. Hey, hey, it's just depressing. It and after some preparation, the two began to rob and grief George's house. Things got a bit out of hand as they ended up burning parts of the roof and bridge outside. And without a care in the world, the two ran from the pillaged house unseen. But unbeknownst to them, this was the final straw. Over the past weeks, people have been reporting griefings and pranks on their property with signs that match exactly how Tommy talks. And although no one had seen him do it, it was apparent that he was the one doing the griefing. And now, because George had been made king of the Dream SMP in place of Eret, who was dethroned, Tommy had directly attacked the Dream SMP faction by griefing George's house. Upon seeing the house practically destroyed, Dream was enraged, and he knew exactly who had done it. He quickly made his way to Lamanberg. Taking a look at the already rebuilt nation, Dream decided there was only one thing he could do. If they wanted freedom, they could have it. But no more would he put his own citizens at risk of people like Tommy. If they wanted the walls, they could have them. Mere minutes after Tommy ended his stream, Nikki arrived at Lamanberg only to see Dream surrounding the country with an obsidian wall. Word quickly spread, and soon everyone who was online showed up to see what was happening. Dream exclaimed that he was marking their borders, and when asked why, he told the people to talk to Tommy. Nikki quickly realized what had happened. She and Captain Puffy, who was also new to the server, had seen what Tommy and Rambu did, and proceeded to inform the others of their actions. Following this, the people, led by Rambu, who denied all involvement with the griefing, observed the damaged house. Tubbo was especially angry, questioning why he even made Tommy vice president in the first place. With this, Tubbo and Fundy decided to gather all of the members of the cabinet to discuss their options the next day. And as the sun set, the people logged off once again, fearing for the safety of their home. The next day, everyone logged on and prepared for the meeting. Tommy saw the walls for the first time and stared in shock as he realized what he'd done. Meeting in the Camar van, the cabinet discussed the situation. Dream has built walls right. around Lamanberg, which is obviously not okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and yep, he's claiming mm -hmm. that all treaties are void, seeing that we overthrew mm -hmm, the government yep. the treaties were made with. However, yep, mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. think this is done without motive. I feel like someone mm -hmm. in this room has done something, okay? Because we're the yep. people of power. Mm -hmm. And if he wanted to hurt Lamanberg, he'd hurt the people of power. That's us. Yep. So mm -hmm. someone in this mm -hmm. room, I reckon, has aggravated him. Tommy, what have you done? Do I look like a guilty man to you? I'm going to be honest, yes. Tommy. This has your name written all over it. George came in here and said that his house burned down. Did you That's have anything to do with that? That's such a shame. Anything. Did you, did you, did you have so anything? anything? No. You no, are. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Really? With the meeting going nowhere and Tommy denying all involvement, the cabinet decided to talk directly with Dream to uncover the truth. Hey, Dream, I'd like to, I'd like to start by um, pointing the attention to the, the elephant in the room being the massive obsidian borders you've put up. I would like to know if there was, if there was any, any motive, oh, I'm, any kind I'm of. I'm just, you know, we signed treaties a while ago. Yeah. Right? To me, those treaties mean nothing. 
because you are a new government. You have taken over the old government. You disregarded the old government's law and you took it over. Now, okay. I didn't really care about this okay. until our so king's dream. vacation home was burnt down by Tommy. I want Tommy punished. I want something to happen to Tommy for what he's done. If nothing is done, the walls will expand and more will happen. The conversation continued with Tommy denying everything. And so Dream decided to talk alone with Tubbo. He did this, You're didn't the president. He? I know. He did. He did. And I know you want peace and I, and do. I have no problem with you. I really that's why hope I we can like come to a peaceful, president. resolve this peacefully. I'm sure we can, but Tommy, you know, he doesn't, he's not peaceful at all. No. And as long as Tommy's vice president, there can't be peace. My suggestion is that you exile Tommy. Wow. Uh, Get him out. That's all I have to say, though. Tubbo was completely divided. He knew Tommy had done it, and also knew that listening to Dream would be best for the country. But if Tubbo were to exile Tommy, he would also be betraying his best friend. And so, after a quick discussion with Fundy and Quackity, they decided to take Tommy to court to make their official decision. The two sides presented their case and eventually agreed to put Tommy on probation, stripping him of his powers as Vice President of Lamanberg. All seemed to be resolved, but Dream was not satisfied. What do you what do you mean probation isn't enough? He's been stripped of That's all his not power. Enough. I know you suggested That's not exile, enough. but hear me out, hear me out, okay? But listen, Tommy is Tommy. He's never gonna stop. Like he already said he, his goal is to piss me off. And if you want that as somebody in your nation that even if he doesn't have power, listen to me. This Tommy, you've done enough damage for today. No, no, listen to you me. Have... I do one thing, which I'm more than well in my free rights to do. We have no correlation with the Dream SMP anymore. But you know, Tubbo, Tubbo. And you I know what? This, actually, this is how you react. You don't wanna you don't insane. wanna exile him, that's fine. I Give me the disc. What? Tommy, I suggest you stay quiet. What, do not yeah, give him the- fine. I gave you that disc to you to prove to you how much I- Tommy, there's you. one big difference between you and Dream. Dream isn't the vice president. And you are. Actions have consequences. There'll right. be a meeting on the 2nd of December. We will sign a treaty. We will sort this. See you then. December 2nd. The members of the cabinet had decided to hold off on making their decision to hear what Dream had to say. Today, they hoped would shine light on the best decision for Lamanberg as well as the true extent of Tommy's destruction. The cabinet met Dream in a newly constructed meeting room residing in the Greater Dream SMP. Here, they pled that Tommy's probation was providing good results and that an exile, as Dream heavily requested, was not necessary. After some negotiation, the group agreed that Tommy's probation would continue, and if he so much as breathed in the wrong direction, Dream would double the size of the walls, and Tommy's probation would be extended. Everyone was relieved. Tubbo did not have to take drastic measures, and the tension between Dream SMP and Lamanberg began to lighten. Lamanberg was in no shape for another conflict, and with the signing of the treaty, it seemed they were in the clear. But Tommy had other plans. After the signing of the treaty, Tommy asked for an ender chest. Complying out of curiosity, Dream watched as Tommy revealed he was still in possession of Dream's most valued item on the server. The leather dropped by his old pet horse, Spirit. Tommy realized that Dream had nothing on him, and stated that because Skeppy had his other disc, Dream had nothing to hold over Tommy. The cabinet members stood in awe as they realized what this meant. Dream may not have had Tommy's disc, but he did have the power to destroy Lamanberg again. Once again reverting to his selfish ways, Tommy ignored the possible consequences on Lamanberg in favor of his discs. Tubbo warned him that this was a very bad idea, but he didn't listen. Threatening to burn spirit, Tommy ordered Dream to tear down the obsidian walls. And as they made their way to Lamanberg, that's exactly what Dream did. Until he stopped. Confused, Tommy, Quackity, and Fundy ordered him to continue working. But this time, Dream had no intention of listening. 
Why? What are you doing? Okay, listen, you fucked up this time. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about spirit. I care about your discs. I care more about your discs than you do. That's the only thing I care about in the server, actually. I don't care about spirit. Spirit was my horse, died ages ago. I care about your discs, because that's what gives me power over you and your friends and everybody that you care about, because you care about your disc more than anyone else here. So if you are not exiled from Lemanberg, I will build these walls until they've reached this block limit. I will keep everybody inside. I will hire guards, puns, and sapnap to patrol all around the entire walls, keeping them inside. No trade, no one leaves, no armor, or they get slaughtered inside. Don't try and threaten me. I don't care. Oh, Bird, spear care. right in front of me right now. I have attachment to your discs. They're my discs. Why, why do you even no, no, care no, no, about no, them? No, 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 Tommy, Tommy, they're my discs. You mm -hmm. have three days. If you do not exile him in three days, I'll do what I said. Lemanberg can be independent, but Lemanberg can't be free. Tubbo's fear had become reality. Lemanberg had a chance to move forward, peacefully. But Tommy, in his own self-interest, threw that chance away, thinking he could beat Dream. But Dream had moved past attachment, moved past weakness. All he cared about was power, and Tommy had just given him another reason to use that power against them. Tubbo had to make a decision. The toughest decision in the history of Lemanberg, friendship, or freedom. You had one job. You couldn't do one thing for me. You couldn't do one. Just one thing, and it was for your own good. If the roles were reversed, yeah, you probably wouldn't exile me, because I would have actually listened to you and done what you said, and maybe had a couple ounces of respect. You've messed this up for no one but yourself. This whole war, all of this Lemanberg, everything, this has started way before Lemanberg. Me and you versus Dream. This isn't, this can't be where we split now. Tubbo, you can't turn into what you hate. You can't be the next schlatt. If you exile me, you're following in that man's footsteps. Okay, well, Please. as long as I can't be the next schlatt, you can't be the next Wilbur. Two days passed, and the day of the decision arrived. The cabinet members talked about what they were going to do. Would they answer to Dream's requests and exile their friend, or risk having another war by sticking by his side? Tommy proposed that exiling him would only further divide Lemanberg, giving Dream the ability to easily overpower and take control of their nation. Tommy suggested another plan. Together, the group would stand up to Dream. Tommy proposed that although they could not take on Dream by themselves, one man could. He suggested they recruit Technoblade. Quackity and Fundy loved the idea. They were tired of Dream pushing them around and wanted revenge. Knowing Technoblade despised government and fearing Dream's power, Tubbo knew this plan would be insanely risky. But resentfully, he agreed. And with a new plan in place, the cabinet gathered on top of the walls to announce their decision to Dream. We have come to a decision. Look around. There's giant obsidian walls. There is, there is, Dream, and that that's that that is a that is a problem. Okay. You know, this is funny actually. Tommy. You... I am I am so so sorry. Dream, oh. I've come to the decision that will be best for the nation. The most logical thing to do for Tommy to be exiled from Lamanburg. What? what? Teaming? With Technoblade what? is an awful idea. It's an awful idea. We just had this conversation. No, no, okay? Um... Nothing involving any kind of conflict is the best for this nation. You've undermined my authority from the get-go. Okay, all of you, no one here has respected me. You all jump on these merry little bandwagons of, of destruction. It's not okay. Why would you go back on the plan now? What the hell? When I was sworn in, I made a promise. To do what was best for the nation. And right now, Tommy, you, your presence here is not the best for this nation. Before everything, the discs, Tubbo. What about the discs? They're Tubbo, just this is what... music discs. Tubbo, you know what this looks like? They shouldn't be able to dictate the future of an entire nation. How are the discs anywhere? Can't you see? The discs don't the matter, Tommy! How can you not see that? If nothing matters, then... Then why does any of any of this matter at all? 
Dream, please detain and escort Tommy out of my country. Are you... What? What? Tommy, this isn't... are you... Let's go. Tommy, you are hereby exiled. It's how it has to be. Tommy, You're a liability. I, I think, you need don't... to leave now. You're my friend. Betrayed. That is what Tommy felt. Betrayed by a partner, his friend, his best friend. Tommy was escorted from Lamanberg immediately, as ordered by Tubbo. No last words and no goodbyes. Nothing. As the two traveled away from the walls, a confused Ghostbird decided to join them on their journey. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, Tommy was once again exiled from his home of Lamanberg. They traveled oceans, forests, only stopping in a plains biome nearly one and a half thousand blocks from Lamanberg. Dream forced Tommy to set his spawn so he could no longer return by dying. After this, Dream ordered him to drop all of the items he had into a hole to be destroyed. Once again, he was cast away. Once again, he had nothing. But this time, it really was his fault. With his only friend in thousands of blocks being Ghostbur, Tommy was alone. But he hadn't given up hope of one day returning to Lamanberg. Tommy and Ghostbird decided to build their official home near the ocean. After some time, Tommy decided to name their land Logstitcher, as their home resembled a campsite surrounded by stripped log walls. As much as Tommy hated it, this was his life now. He missed his friends. In an attempt to cheer him up, Ghostbird entrusted Tommy with a special compass that no matter where he was in the world would always point towards Tubbo. He cherished this compass. At least now he had something to remind him of his best friend, his Tubbo. The days came and went. Tommy would finally begin to make progress and Dream would immediately force him to give up all of it. Everything became a routine. Tommy started to question if Dream was really that bad. After all, other than Ghostbur, he was the only one who visited him. Tommy began to look forward to his conversations with Dream. Even though he would destroy everything Tommy had, Dream, it seemed, was the only one who still cared. Ghostbur had told Tommy that he gifted Tubbo with an identical compass pointing to Tommy. But Tommy was sure that he hated the gift just as much as Tubbo hated him. As the days turned to weeks, Tommy became sad. After all he'd been through with his friends, still no one visited him. In an attempt to see his friends again, Tommy decided to throw a beach party. Decorating the beach with Ghostbur, Tommy had planned out the perfect day for his reunion with his friends. The date of the party was set for December 9th, and Tommy sent Ghostbird to invite every citizen of Lamanberg. A few days passed. Everyone had gotten their invite and the day of the celebration arrived. Tommy, looking forward to seeing everyone, sat at a table on the beach waiting for his guests to arrive. Some time passed, and 15 minutes after the scheduled start of the party, the only person there was Dream. But it was okay. Everyone was just running late. Surely everyone missed Tommy as much as he missed them. Right? The minutes came and went. Tommy began to worry. Had people really forgotten? No. There's no way all of them forgot. His friends didn't all just happen to lose their invite. They had chosen not to come. Them. All of them. Would rather do nothing than see Tommy again. Nobody cared. Tommy concluded that if the roles were reversed and Tubbo was the one exiled, everyone would be there every day to check on him. But because it was Tommy, nobody cared. He imagined a Lamanberg without himself as the people celebrated his absence every day. He had lost all hope. Dream explained to Tommy that Tubbo had burned his compass. This broke him. He contemplated throwing his compass into lava, but decided to keep it for the time being. As of now, his last friends on the server were Rambu and Dream. But that was about to change. 
Every day when Dream would blow up Tommy's things, he would lie and keep a few items on him. With the help of Rambu, he constructed a small hidden chest room to keep these items safe under Logstead. This chest finally allowed him to start making progress, finally regain power. But on December 15th, something went horribly wrong. As Dream dug a hole for Tommy to drop his stuff in, he found the chest room. Tommy stood in fear of what was about to happen. Dream stated that Tommy had messed up bad, lied to a friend, and until he learned to listen, he would have to start over. This time, truly alone. Dream proceeded to blow up all of Lockstitchshire, and told Tommy that no one was allowed to visit him and the nether was off limits. Tommy begged for a second chance. He felt bad that he made Dream upset and blamed everything on himself. Dream had been gracious to him, even letting him keep his stuff some days. But he still, for some reason, just had to go behind his back. As Dream abandoned him, Tommy examined the ruins of the only thing he had left. He thought about everything. All the memories he had with Lamanberg with his old friends. And most of all, he thought about Dream. I don't need the nether. I'm just alone. My only friend, Dream, is gone. I'm above them already. He was my friend. He, Dream, was my only friend this entire time. He came, and he'd visit me every day, and we'd laugh, and we'd cry, so much crying. And he'd take my things, he'd make me throw everything into a, into a hole. And he said to me, I'll see you every, every week to come and watch you. He, he'd come to watch me. He wasn't here to be my friend. Tubbo watches coldly as his best friend is escorted away from Lamanberg. As much as it pained him to send Tommy away, being the president of Lamanberg meant he had to protect his country. And Tommy had more than enough chances to make things right. Although Fundy and Quackity disagreed with Tubbo's decision, all of them understood that there was no changing his mind. Dream soon returned, announcing that Tommy was now far away from Lamanberg and had been successfully exiled. And with this, the walls were taken down, and Dream had once again declared Lamanberg as an independent nation. Praising Tubbo for making the right decision, Dream vowed that Lamanberg would have his full support in any wars to come. As the sun set, Lamanberg was free once again. But the people had already began to miss their exiled friend. A few days later, Gosper arrived with a gift for Tubbo. Knowing he missed Tommy greatly, Gosper entrusted Tubbo with the compass that would always point to Tommy. From that point forward, Tubbo would always hold the compass in his offhand to never forget how much Tommy meant to him. Word spread that Tommy was having a beach party at his home in exile, but to everyone's disappointment, none of them had received invites. Tubbo really wanted to visit Tommy, but having not been invited to his party and hearing from Gosper that Tommy was very sad, Tubbo did not want to make him feel any worse than he already did the last time they saw each other. And so, Tubbo, as well as the rest of the cabinet members, decided to give Tommy his space, to let him calm down before visiting to apologize. To make matters even worse, while working on a project, Tubbo had ended up losing his Tommy compass to a creeper explosion. Tubbo felt crushed. He questioned if he made the right decision to exile Tommy, and just wanted things to go back to normal. He wanted his best friend, but he knew he had to wait. Following Tommy's exile, the people of Lamanberg knew their nation still wasn't completely safe. And so, Fundy and Quackity came up with a plan. They discussed with Tubbo possible threats to the safety of Lamanberg. And quickly, two people began to stand out as their biggest enemies. Technoblade and Dream. 
Dream had just threatened Lemanberg, and without question had the power to take down their country whenever he wanted. This made him dangerous, and a prime target for the Lemanberg hit list. However, following the exile of Tommy, Dream and Lemanberg, in his eyes, were on great terms. This meant that although he was dangerous, taking out Dream was not their number one priority. But Technoblade was. Following his betrayal of Lemanberg in the previous war, Technoblade had moved from his house under the river to an undisclosed location. As far as the people knew, he could be anywhere, plotting his next major attack on Lemanberg. And with this realization, the Butcher Army was officially created to take out Technoblade for good. Before the army could kill Technoblade, they had to find him. However, that is much easier said than done. Technoblade is smart, and thus has made sure not to return to Lemanberg for any reason to avoid being followed home. If he doesn't want to be found, he won't be. But the army had another idea. To their knowledge, only one person knew the whereabouts of Techno on the entire server. And he just so happened to live in Lemanberg. After recruiting Rambu, the group quickly made their way to Filza's house to interrogate him. We have a simple request. We are looking for Technoblade. Just tell us where he is. You are a citizen of Lemanberg. We're trying to get justice for our country. You, have to you should care about this as much as we care about it. So, Phil, tell us where Technoblade is. I'm Phil. not going to tell you. He's changed his ways. Philza, just tell us. This is for the country. This is not a request. This is a demand. Where do you think this, this loyalty that I have for this country exists. I, I'm not loyal to this country at all. I'm pretty new here, and if anything, you guys need to prove to me that I, sh that I should care. Also, wow. uh, Techno and me go way back, and we do not rat out on each other. If you're not going to help us do it the easy you're way, you're going to have to do it the hard way, right? Right. Immediately, the army began searching Phil's chest for any clue to Techno's location. And a few seconds into the search, Tubbo hit the jackpot. In one of the chests, Tubbo had stumbled across a compass that pointed directly to Technoblade's house. Whenever Phil visited Techno, he used the compass to guide him. But today, it would lead the Butcher army directly to his front door. Because of his failure to comply, Tubbo placed Phil under house arrest until further notice. And as the army set out to kill Techno, Phil could do nothing but watch and warn his friend. They're coming. Technoblade quickly flees the scene of a now-destroyed Lemanberg. His withers had been killed and he knew it was only a matter of time before the people turned on him. Cutting through the night on his trusty horse Carl, Techno quickly arrived at his now-looted bunker. They had taken so much, only to turn around and create the one thing he was openly opposed to. Government. Techno knew he was living on borrowed time. The other major threat to Lemanberg was already dead, and he knew as soon as the people came to their senses, they would come for him. And because he had just shown the entire server where his secret base lied, he knew he had to move. And so, over the next two days, Techno, with some help from Filza, moved all of his stuff to a faraway place. Somewhere cold, unrelenting, and barren. The last place they would look to find him. Over the next few weeks, Techno would build a humble cabin to house him in between adventures. He entrusted Phil with a compass to his house to ensure he wouldn't get lost, as well as making him promise not to tell anyone the location of his new home. For weeks, he hid, officially retiring from his violent ways in favor of peace. Until December 16th, a seemingly normal day. Techno logged onto the server and started to move through the items on his to-do list. But then, out of nowhere, he got a chilling message from Phil. They were coming. They were coming and Techno had no time to prepare. With every second that passed, the army drew closer to his no longer secret estate. Techno grabbed everything he could find to aid him in case a fight broke out. And as he was brewing potions, a completely oblivious Gosper arrived at his door. 
while Techno pocketed Totems of Undying and grabbed every weapon in his arsenal, Ghostbur waddled off in the snow to name a sheep friend. Upon finding Ghostbur, the Butcher army asked him about Techno, to which he immediately led them directly to his house. Techno spotted them on a nearby hill, the four who seeked him out with the sole purpose to kill. And Ghostbur waved. The six of them met directly outside Techno's house and discussed what was about to happen. Not here. Technoblade's not here, guys. You he said Wilbur. I can literally see him, Will. Get out Ghostbur, of the way. A Ghostbur, Wilbur. I think it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit late for that. It's Why have you guys here. come all the way over here to my humble abode? How about oh, you invite us? You need to pay for your war crime. Uh, well, 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 that was like... That's in the past, man, all right? That was a different Technoblade. I'm a changed man now. I'm in retirement. Mm. I'm a good person now, Tubbo. Mm. Sorry, I'm sorry, Technoblade. As much as you change, you have to be brought to justice for that. Listen, you guys. I have gone to so much effort over the past month to change my violent ways. I have reformed, all right? The voices, they demand blood. And I, I have been denying them. I have been fighting back. Please. Please don't make me kill all of you. Please just leave. We won't let you get out of here in one piece, okay? It's either going to be the easy way or it's going to be the hard way. We're going to yeah, bring you back to a and you're going to come with us. There's no other way around it, okay? There's no other way. I choose blood! No! Oh, no! Blood! Get out! Get out! Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh my god, he hits heavy! Get out! Get the axes, get the axes! Use the axes! This is the time! Oh my god! I got you, I got you. Pick you, do the big one! Pick you! Pick you! Tango Blade, stop! Oh, he hits heavy! Death! 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 Wait, wait, wait! What are you doing? What are you doing with that horse? Something was wrong. Techno's treasured horse, Carl, was being threatened with death if Techno failed to cooperate. Bending to the wills of his captors, Techno listened. Quackity ordered him to drop all of his items but he secretly decided to keep a few in case of emergency. And with this, the Butcher army took Techno to the slaughter. Technoblade's execution would take place in the town square of Lamanberg. Upon their arrival, he would be placed in a cage composed of iron bars and glass. This execution would be by anvil. A redstone device was wired to a lever next to the cage that when activated would pull the block out from under the anvil, dropping it from the sky onto a helpless Technoblade below. The army gathered around to witness this historic moment. Tubbo explained that Techno had robbed them, stepped in when it was not his battle to fight. And now it was only fair they would take something in return. A life, his first of three gone for good. Filza watched from his house. As much as he wanted to step in, there was nothing he could do but watch his friend be killed in front of him. But he wouldn't have to step in. He ruined the government. Puns is throwing right. And it, what is <laughs> what? What, what, what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Oh, shoot. What? 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 No, 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 Hello, I've Ghostbird. Named him, I've named him friend. That's fantastic, Ghostbird. That's fantastic. I'm about to die, yes, Ghostbird. No, no, no. I'm playing Ghostbird. What? 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 He's got Carl! He's got Carl! To techno surprise, Dream and Puns had teamed up to help him escape. And as Techno ran, Puns distracted the army while Dream brought Carl to a newly dug tunnel for Techno to escape through. He entered the tunnel, quickly finding himself in the final control room, the very same used in Eric's betrayal during the first Lamanberg War. There, Dream had left Techno a chest with supplies to help him in case a fight broke out during his escape. And after beginning to finish digging his escape tunnel, this happened. Oh, uh, oh, that's not good. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, it's, it's not what How it looks like. How the hell did that anvil not kill you? <laughs> did you really think, Quackity, that you could kill me that easily? 
How did you do it? What? How did you even do that? You think death can stop me, Quackity? I've got, I've got a lot to say. I was going to say it at the trial, but we got a little bit interrupted, Quackity. You know, I tried convincing you guys that government, that government was not the answer. The government was actually the cause of all your problems. All right. I tried to, I tried to convince you guys by fighting alongside you as brothers, and you just cast me aside. You used me. I tried to use force, but you still formed a government. And when I went into hiding, when I retired, when I swore off violence, you hunted me down. You hurt my friends. You don't understand, Techno. You don't understand what we're trying to build here, Techno. You are on the hit list, Techno. What hit list? I'm building a country here. This is what, what we have over there is a country. And what we need here is organization and power. And I don't care how long it takes me or what I have to do to get you, Techno. I'm going to kill you, Techno. Please. I just have one question, Quackby. What do you have? Do you think you're enough to kill me, even unarmed with iron armor? Do you really think you can take no, me? I do. Uh, no, no! Very, very <laughs> it's like, I have a pickaxe, and I'll put it through your teeth! I'll put it through your teeth, Quackity! If there's one PvP that I'm planning to win, it's this one, baby. <laughs> My aim is so bad with this FOE. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. <laughs> Technoblade, with a mere pickaxe and half the armor worn by Quackity, had won. Following the duel, Techno escaped through the sewers, eventually exiting through Tommy's sewer escape route. With this, Techno was free. Their plan had worked. They had successfully captured Techno, but they failed to account for one eternal truth. Technoblade never dies. Techno traveled land and sea on his journey home. Together with Carl, the two seek to relax after a long and stressful day. They traverse the barren wasteland of frozen powder, and through the harsh winter blizzard, Techno could finally See home. And what? Eh. Eh. He's just ignoring me. How do? What are you doing in my house, Tommy? Well, hello. How are you? I say we call it our house. Eh. And these guys' houses. Well. Why are you letting them in? Your Why pants just broke. Uh, hey, don't worry, I found these in the closet. Sounds like someone's having a rough day! What the heck is down this? What the heck is this? Down what down. the heck is this? Oh, I moved out, by the way. You know my old home? I'm, I'm here now. I kind of noticed. Why do I have so much beef? Hey, we don't need no beef, Tenorblade. We can be pals. Give me back my stuff, Tommy. Hey, hey, hey. You obviously need to cool down. That did nothing. Go away, actually. This is my. This room. is my house. Well, this is my You room, leave. Mm, no. If, if it makes you feel better, I can explain to you what happened. Stop placing my gold. I'm a loner. I'm like a lone wolf. I'm like a big dog. So please leave my home. That is, this is my house. Goodbye. All right. Well, goodbye. we have we have two we have two, we have two possibilities goodbye. here. Uh, stop mm. saying goodbye. Yeah. This is this is my property. Well, this is the, it I, definitely has the prime log. I will break the primal. <laughs> I don't know why you're here. I live here. You killed Wilbur. Kubo, right? I, I I I am known to do that. Uh, good day. Leave my house. This is my house, Tommy. After a very awkward conversation, Techno came up with a plan. You see, Tommy, I know a lot about putting trust in other people, and having them having them betray that trust, using me as a weapon and then casting me aside when it's most convenient for them. You want to be friends with Tubbo? You want to know what's driven you apart? Why you don't have your disc? It's because of the government. If there was no government, you and Tubbo could be friends. You could have your discs back. There'd be nothing for Dream to threaten. Join me. Let's destroy Lemanberg. I have something I need to show you. I have been working on just, just a little, just a little hobby time. I need, I need you to stand right here. All right. You see this wall? Oh yeah. Welcome home, Theseus. Thank you all so much for watching. 
If you made it this far and are not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so as I spent literally over a month on this video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, comment your thoughts down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.